I got a call that they were looking to cast. Well, okay, so I was asked to test for an ABC series and I passed on it because the idea of sitting in a, a fake courtroom for seven years just made my head. To be an actor on this series. Yeah, but it was hard. I mean, that's money that I could use. Sure. And <laughs> so, but, but I'm happy and I like my life and I love the people I work with. So I, 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 I ended up telling my agent no, and I, the, there's the, somewhere the text exists. I texted my agent, um, maybe if it was on Netflix. Within a week, I get a call, and he's like, "Guess what? I have an audition for a Netflix show." And it was a Friday night, and I was I was tired because I had been working a long long hours that week. And I remember saying to him, "I don't want to do it." And he was like, "You said that if it was a Netflix show." So. I was like, God damn it. So I texted a friend (laughs) and I said, will you help put me on tape? And then we'll just, it'll be, we'll do two, three takes and that'll be it. So I did it. I sent it. The next morning I got a text from Aziz (laughs) and it's like, Hey, we saw your tape. Will you come to New York to meet the producers of the show? And I was like, um, sure. I, well, maybe right. When? And he's like, tonight. And I was like, fuck. So I did. I flew to New York at And nine. you were probably in the writer's room at Bob's Burgers. No, this was a Saturday. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so I flew, to, I flew to New York at 8 p.m., 9 p.m. I landed at 8 a.m. And I get off the plane and I, there's another text. And he says, hey, will you uh, just come to my house or come to my apartment? So I'm like, all of this is crazy. I, I didn't fly first class. <laughs> I flew like in a middle seat that I booked, you know an hour before I got on the flight or two hours before I got on the flight. Um, I show up at his apartment. He opens the door in his boxers. He's like, I'm going to go back to sleep. And I'm like, okay. He's like, just go to sleep on the couch. So I slept on, I just like pulled a blanket over me, um, took off my shoes and just actually fell asleep. Uh, but I, I looked at the ceiling for a couple of minutes going, okay, just, you know, just roll with it. You don't know what's happening, but just roll with it. We woke up. I woke up to him standing over me, and he's fully dressed now. And he's like, let's go, <laughs> "Damn it, <laughs> let's go get some coffee." So we went and we got a little coffee. We chatted for literally twenty minutes, and he's like, "I'm gonna go meet my parents. I'll see you today at 3. So he tells me where to go at three. I, it sounds like the beginning of an episode of Master of None. Yeah, it was very. I'll it was go to my parents. very I'll be back. <laughs> I went to a coffee shop in in uh, Soho and sat there for six hours, um, doing wrote some Bob's Burgers stuff and waiting, went at three, and we did like 10 minutes of improv. It was not much. It was me and him and, and Alan and a producer. And then at the end of that, I got up, and he shakes my hand. He goes, thanks for coming out. And I just got in an elevator and walked away. So now I'm walking up Broadway, and I'm like, oh, he texted me. And he goes, hey, I really appreciate you flying all the way out here. I'm like, oh, fuck, I didn't, I didn't get this. I, no, I just blew like two grand to fly out here oh, in the last minute. Um, and then, you know, I just, but I was at peace with it because mm-hmm. I like, like I said, I like my life. I like writing. I like, and uh, so I just went and I worked on the hundredth episode of Bob's uh, via FaceTime with Steven at some coffee shop. And then I went home a few days later, they called, they said, okay, so they, they're booking you. And it all was too fast for me to think too hard about it. I cleared some time with Bob's Burgers, which was very generous of, of them. And uh, I was able to do this thing that, I again, it's hard to know. It's it's the reception of it, both critically and and viewership wise, has been so positive. It's hard to remember that at the time. At the time, we weren't sure. We didn't mm-hmm. know that it was going to be anything. Lots of shows are shipwrecked against you know, the hills of um, sort of, you know, subscription TV. There's there's lots of shows that sure. people never talk about, yeah. and um, this isn't one of them. This is a show people seem to have really connected to. So, it it happened really fast and. Um, and meeting Alan and Aziz, uh, to me, has been bigger than the show even because I'm not Judd Apatow. I, his, his family was, to some extent, like I think his, his uh, father, or his, his, somebody in his family was in music. And I had no models in that way. And, and I had no path laid out. I didn't even have like a distant model. Like Steve Martin. I didn't look at Steve Martin and go, yeah, it kind of looks like me. Maybe I'll do some Steve Martin. I'd, nobody looks like Alan or Aziz or myself. That, and that was probably, that's all three of you, right? I mean, everyone's that's, backstory that's, is that, very That's why similar. I bring them yeah. up. That's why I bring them up. Because to meet them, I'm like, okay, 
these guys are doing it and they're doing it without models like like I like I I lack and that's uh invaluable to me I you know so it's emboldening it's it that is the wind in my sails uh when when you every time you meet another person like that Thank you.